Hi, this is Robert Kane, N4IXT. In this presentation, we'll take a look at the RTL SDR dongle with SDR Sharp software. I've been an amateur radio operator since 1999 and currently hold an amateur extra class license. I'm also an ARRL Life member. Professionally, I'm the owner of Arcane Training and Consulting, working as a trainer in the Microsoft IT space. Check out arcaneco.me for more information. So what is SDR? Well, SDR is Software Defined Radio. Many of you may have seen this in various radios, such as the ones from Flex Systems. In this case, we're going to implement Software Defined Radio using a simple inexpensive dongle that will receive radio. To be clear, this is only receive, it doesn't transmit. Now the SDR in the name of this particular unit comes from Software Defined Radio. The RTL comes from the chipset number. As you can see in the image, it uses the RTL 2832U chipset. So where do you get your radio from? Well, the simplest place is from Amazon. You can see the bit.ly link, bit.ly slash RTL SDR. And this particular unit has both the dongle and several antennas. You can also buy just the dongle for about $20. But as you can see, for $26.95, it's a very small investment. Now, once your dongle arrives, don't plug it up yet. There are several other things that we need to cover before you go start plugging things in. One of those is your antenna system. There are several options that you have. First, if you get the unit that I just showed, it actually comes with a little base, a set of rapid ears, and a little tripod that you can mount it on. This is sufficient to get a lot of frequencies in, say, the 2 meter band, or 440, or other similar amateur radio bands. It also works quite well to pick up commercial FM and AM radio. You can also use an external antenna. Here, I have a fairly old scanner antenna I picked up at Radio Shack many, many years ago attached to a pole. Scanner antennas are pretty inexpensive. It's a little hard to see in the picture, but it's there at the top. And I've got a couple of zip ties poking out just so I can get an idea of what direction the wind's coming in. Now, what if you want to pick up some longer wavelengths? Well, to access some of the HF bands, you're going to need to have longer antennas than what the little rabbit ears give you. So for those, you can use these little roll-up antennas. These roll-up antennas are under $10 a piece, and they're really designed for shortwave radios. However, they also work quite well with this particular application. You just have a pair of them, and you clip them onto the short antennas that come with the RTL SDR kit. Then you simply unroll them to whatever length you need. Here's another example of an antenna. As a ham radio operator, you may like to operate portable. This is the MFJ 1699T, which receives all bands from 80 through 10 meters. Of course, if you have an existing antenna on your property, such as a dipole, a large Yagi antenna, or pretty much any type of antenna that will receive signals, you can hook that up and use it as well. It's important to keep your gear organized. As you get into RTL-SDR, you'll quickly accumulate little pieces, things that you want to keep together and organized. I found a little inexpensive Plano tackle box at my available Big Box Mart, and it was about $7. It neatly organizes everything that I have. As you can see in the image, the RTL-SDR dongle is in here, several longer extension cords, some adapters, on the right side, we have the roll-up antennas as well as the little base. Do note, I had to make one little modification to the box. In order to get in the longer rabbit ear style antennas, I had to trim just a little notch out of the very back of the case. It only took a few seconds, very easy to do, and just use my pocket knife. With that modification, the case became a perfect fit for this particular kit. So next, we're going to get into setting up SDR Sharp. SDR Sharp is the software that is used 
communicate with your Arcteo SDR dongle. It also includes the various drivers that you'll need. So where do we get SDR Sharp from? Well, you'll download it from a website called AirSpy. AirSpy makes their own version of an SDR radio that plugs into the USB port of a computer. Be warned though, their unit, while very high quality and very nice, is also very expensive, usually well over $100. Fortunately, their SDR Sharp software works with pretty much any dongle that uses the RTL chipset. This then becomes an excellent way to get into software-defined radios. You can then purchase the lesser expensive RTL SDR dongle we're talking about here. And if you decide you're really into it, you can come back to the AirSpy site and perhaps look at their dongle. You can jump directly to the download page by going to the bit.ly link on the screen, bit.ly slash SDR Sharp. All right, well, let's go now and take a look at the software after we've downloaded it. In my C drive, I created a folder called Amateur Radio. This is going to hold several applications I'll be downloading onto this computer. Into this folder, I have downloaded my SDR Sharp x86.zip file that I downloaded from AirSpy. I unzipped this into its own SDR Sharp folder. We'll go into it. And the first program we want is install RTL SDR.bat. So I'll come down here, and most likely you're going to need to run this as an administrator. So I'm going to right click on it, and I'm going to select Run as Administrator. And there we go, it was just that easy. So at this point, we can now plug in our dongle before we go on to the next step. So let me pause the video here just a moment so I can go plug it in, make sure you hook it to an antenna, and then after it's plugged in, we'll start the video back and continue on with the configuration. All right, so you've executed install RTL SDR.bat and you've plugged your device in. If everything went well, you should have some new files in your current folder. I'm gonna scroll down and you're now going to see we have a new file called zadig.exe. Zadig is an application that helps you install the special drivers needed for your RTL SDR dongle. Now, if you don't have this file, you can actually go to the RTL SDR website and find the instructions for manually installing them. Here's their website. Just go to rtl-sdr.com and do a search on manual installation. And they have the step-by-step -step instructions to manually downloading the two sets of files you'll need. You'll need the drivers, and then you'll need the Zadig software, both of which you'll download and place into your folder with the SDR Sharp software. Okay, let's return to the folder. So let's come back here and let's actually execute zadig.exe. Now we need to come in here and you need to check options, list all devices. We're going to change from USB audio device to bulk in interface zero. That's very important. Bulk in interface zero. Now, because I've run this already, so I could set this up and test it, it actually shows me that I already have the Win USB driver installed. Let's go take a quick look at a screen capture of this particular interface when you're installing it brand new. In a fresh installation, the driver on the left should read RTL2832 UUSB as you see here on the screen. If that is what yours looks like, you can simply click Replace Driver, and that's going to copy the RTL2832 over the WinUSB driver so your dongle will work correctly. Now, upon clicking Replace Driver, Windows may pop up a message that says it can't verify the publisher of this driver software. Well, that's okay. You can click install this driver software anyway, and away you go. Okay, so we'll say that installed successfully, and we can just close out Zadig. And now we're finally ready to run SDR Sharp. So we'll find the SDRSharp.exe, 
double click on it, and it opens up for us. So over here, the first thing you'll need to do is in the drop down, you'll need to select our RTL SDR USB. By default, it comes up to AirSpy, which is okay because that's the guys who make it. We need to make sure the first time we change to RTL SDR USB. After you do that, you need to come up here to the gear icon and click on configure source. You'll pick the generic RTL 2832 OEM from the menu. You actually have two choices because I was playing with this and installing it. We'll just take number one. We can leave the sample rate and sampling mode alone. We have automatic gain control checked on for both the RTL unit and the tuner. If we wanted to, we could uncheck these and then manually set the RF gain with this slider. For right now, leave the sample mode in quadrature sampling. We'll explain some of these other modes later. We'll click close. And that's it. Now you can come up and set the frequency. Now we've already set ours, but you could if you wanted to. Click on this first box, click at the top, it goes up, click at the bottom, it goes down. You can also click there and then type it in manually. And so here I've just keyed in a random frequency. Let's go back to our weather frequency. Uh, what's that you say? Weather frequency? Yes, using the NOAA weather frequencies is a good way to test this. Let's take a look at those frequencies. Within the United States, the National Weather Service runs a series of radio stations that are constantly broadcasting weather data. You can listen in on these by going to one of the frequencies you see on the screen. At the bit.ly link, bit.ly slash weatherfrq, you can see a list of all the 50 states, and when you click on it, it will show you the radio stations by geography for your particular state. Going there showed me that the closest station in my house was 162.550. So let's go back into SDR Sharp and tune into that. Here we are back inside SDR Sharp. I'm going to come here. I'm going to click on the number one so I can start tuning our frequency. And as I said before, I can choose to go up and down by clicking at the top and bottom of the letter. But far more easy is to just simply type it in. So I'm here on the one, I'm going to type in one, six, two. Now you may be tempted to hit the decimal place. Don't do it. You just enter this all as one big Hertz. So it's now five, five, zero. And then we'll just zero out zero, 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 or I can simply hit the enter key. This now tunes me into that frequency. Now I'm just going to click on the play button. West winds around five miles per hour chance of rain 30 percent and you should now be hearing my forecast scattered rain showers highs in the upper 60s west winds 5 to 10 miles per hour chance of rain 50 percent i'm going to stop the audio so we can go look at this i can adjust the zoom level of the upper display and you can see it's zoomed in now if i hit play again wednesday it adjusts it. I can see a much tighter signal. If I don't like the colors, I can come down here and adjust the contrast. Now, these really only take effect while we are streaming. So I'm going to come back and play. And I'm going to quiet him down a little bit. All right. Hopefully you can still hear me good. We'll come down here and I can click on the contrast some more. Darken it up, lighten it up. I can also adjust the range. You see the upper graph, I'm adjusting the dBs that I can see. And I can also adjust the offset. Typically, we just leave the offset at zero. Now let's go back over here on the left, and we'll go ahead and stop him. We can see I can have wide FM or narrow FM. I can also go into the AM band, lower side band or upper side band, CW, digital side bands. And of course, raw just gives me mostly static, to be honest, but 
just a lots of raw signal information without really trying to apply any filtering or logic like that. All right, so let's do a little experiment. I'm going to change this over to one of the ham frequencies. I'm going to click here and we're going to go one, four, six, five, hundred. And I am now in one of the simplex two meter frequencies. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go mute the microphone that I have so that you'll hear me coming over. I'm going to press play, then I'm going to mute the mic because I'm going to be on here. I'm going to select NFM for narrow FM. This is N4IXT testing. N4IXT testing the RTL SDR receiver to see if it can pick up my simplex frequency. N4IXT clear. Well, that worked out pretty well. Got a pretty good signal out of that. Now, obviously, you can use this to tune in just about any frequency you want to. We can go all the way down into the low kilohertz range, or we can get up into the gigahertz areas. You might try tuning in one of your commercial FM radio stations or maybe a commercial AM. There are tons of things you can do with your RTL SDR receiver. So we've now seen how well the RTL SDR dongle works at picking up things in the VHF range. It also works great into UHF and so forth. But how well does it work in the lower HF bands? Well, the answer is pretty well if you're using one of the newer dongles. Now, with the original set of dongles that came out, they did not work below 25 megahertz. You had to purchase something called an up converter, which was a separate unit. In the more modern version, in this case specifically version 3 of the RTL SDR dongle I'm using, it has the up converter already built in. So let's go listen to a conversation. I was tuning around the 160 meter band and I found a conversation between several individuals. It was at the 1.880 megahertz frequency. Now there is one trick you have to know to be able to tune this in. You need to come here to the little gear icon and you need to change the sampling mode to direct sampling, Q branch. And that's what basically engages the up converter. Of course, I've got it set to lower sideband. And I want to hit play so that you can hear this. Now, be aware, I did edit this a little bit for time. And also, while they did identify, and because they didn't know they were going to be on a video, I removed their call signs out of respect for their privacy. All right, let's take a listen. I'm gonna check the winners here. Oh, they still ain't got nobody listed. They just haven't let it out, have they? No, it sure looks like they would too. In fact, they, you know, they ought to be proud of that. They ought to say, so-and-so got it, and he's tickled to death with it. And yeah, 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 do you know? You wanted one of them chairs to go with it? Yeah. Yeah, have a picture of a mayor on the air with it. They sit down with the chairs. Yeah. Yeah. They may be waiting for a All right, that was pretty cool, getting to listen in on that QSO, or conversation between those hams. Let's take a second to look at navigating around within SDR Sharp. I already showed you earlier that I can set the zoom for my display window by using this slider. I can get more frequency, less frequency, and really zoom in tightly. Once I set my frequency in the frequency area at the top, I can fine tune it by using my scroll wheel. So you can see the numbers going up and down. As I move around, I can make a big jump by simply coming over and clicking. I can also come down here to the bottom and scroll my display area left and right. I can also click on an area at the bottom to jump directly to that frequency. Now, you may have noticed that my display looks a little different from the standard out of the box display. That's because SDR Sharp supports plugins. You can find plugins on the RTL SDR page. 
Again, AirSpy is the one who makes the SDR Sharp software. RTL-SDR are the folks who make the dongle that we're using, and they're big supporters of the SDR Sharp software. And they have a page all about plugins, and you can see they list quite a number of them. And they have installer packages for most of these, so you simply download those and run the installer package. You should place these inside the plugins folder of wherever you placed SDR Sharp. So here you can see I put my zip files that I downloaded, extracted the zip file. Let's do the night mode plugin one. And when I extracted it, there's either a readme that tells you what you need to do to install it. Some of these also have installer files that you can execute to install. During the install process, it will update a file called plugins.xml. So you may have to manually update this file, and you can just open it in Notepad and do the editing. And then some of these have installers that, as I said, will copy the files and update this file automatically for you. Once you get your plugins installed, you simply restart. And you can start taking advantage of some of the extra features. Now let's talk about some of the things in the panel over to the left because that's where all of the plugins and all of the built-in components exist. You've already seen the source and the radio area. Let's scroll down a little bit to see some of the other pieces. Now, a favorite of mine is the frequency manager. With the frequency manager, you can save groups of preset frequencies. So you can see here, if I show all groups, I've got my HF bands. I can scroll down to some repeaters and the weather channels. Of course, I can also limit this to just certain groups. Let's go back to the NOAA weather radio. And for this, I'll need to come change my sampling mode back to quadrature because we're above 25 megahertz. And I can simply double click on one of these and you can see it automatically jumps me to that frequency. All right, let's scroll down and look at another one. One is the band plan. You may have noticed that on some of the HF bands, let's jump back up here and I'll just show you this. Go to ham HF and we'll pick one of these. And you can see the big red ham band showing up down at the bottom. This is denoting where my various bands are. And of course, it goes beyond just the ham bands. It also shows me shortwave bands and other areas. And you'll simply check this on in our band plan and say show on spectrum. And there is a toolbar plugin you can get. And you can set different toolbar areas. Now, the toolbar is going to be to the right of our large frequency display. So here I can set my frequency step. There's mode control and more. So lots of different options that I can switch to. The last plugin I'll show you is pretty cool. It's called night mode. And I can simply change this to a very attractive looking display that works well in a dark ham shack. All right, I think that's enough. You should now have sufficient information to install and navigate around SDR Sharp. Well, I hope you enjoyed this introduction to the RTL SDR dongle, as well as the SDR Sharp software. If you did, how about giving us a like and sharing with your fellow radio enthusiasts? If you have any questions, just shoot me an email, n4ixt at outlook.com, or follow me on Twitter at n4ixt. You can also find out more information about me at my blog, arcanecode.me. Thanks for watching.